This is why I don't tell anyone where I live. There was once a boy who asked his single father for a bedtime story. So the father told him, there was once a boy named Kobe who made friends with another boy online called Helper23. On Kobe's birthday, Helper23 wanted to give him a present in real life. So Kobe gave him his home address where he lives with his mom, his dad, and his little brother. But then Kobe started to feel a bit weird about giving his address to a stranger online. The next night, he thought he had to tell his parents about it. He called out to his dad but got no reply, then found both his parents killed and a man wearing a dark hoodie holding a knife in the hallway. As Colby started to beg for his life, he hears his little brother crying in the next room. The intruder then strangles Colby and leaves the house with Colby's baby brother. The boy then looks up at his father and asks, why did the intruder take the baby? To which his father just calmly smiled and said, I've always wanted to be a father. I hid under my boyfriend's bed for two days and tried to poison him. Disclaimer is not my story time, it's not me on Instagram. My boyfriend and I have been dating for three months. And when we started dating, I got really jealous. He was my first boyfriend and I just didn't know how to control my feelings. You can say I'm pretty toxic. Part of the reason why I'm so insecure is because my boyfriend is probably one of the most popular guys in school. He's a basketball player and he's about to be drafted. So all the girls are constantly trying to hook up with him. And this drives me insane. Whenever we go out, girls are falling over trying to get to him. A few weeks ago, I heard a rumor that my boyfriend had hooked up with a girl. When I asked him about it, he got really defensive. He got so angry, he punched a hole in my wall. And well, this made me start thinking. Maybe he was cheating on me. So I basically started stalking him. And that's what I've been doing for the past two weeks. I'm even skipping class just to go wherever he's going. That's when I decided that I would hide in his room i even put on a diaper part two is up i put on the diaper so that i could hide under my boyfriend's bed without having to get out disclaimer is not my story time was sending me on instagram i even took soft food with me so that he wouldn't hear me chewing I knew he wouldn't be home so i snuck into his dorm room that's when i checked his entire room i went through all of his clothes I even went through all of his dirty laundry just to smell them and make sure he didn't have anything in his pockets searched in between the mattresses and i found nothing at this point i was just looking for a sign of him having hooked up with somebody I knew he was going to be coming home soon so i snuck under the bed it was pretty hidden underneath there because it's a huge bed he came in by himself and started changing and went to take a shower but he took his phone with him into the bathroom so i didn't have a chance to check it by the way he thought that i had gone home to my parents house so he wasn't going to be hanging out with me at all as he was getting ready he put on cologne and that's when i knew he was going to go look for another girl a few hours later he comes back and i'm still underneath the bed and guess what he's with a girl the same girl i heard the rumor about they come in they're laughing and i can tell that they're clearly drunk this girl goes to the bathroom and changes into lingerie and then they started making out on the bed while i'm hiding underneath it part three is up as my boyfriend is making out with this girl on his bed, I'm hiding underneath it. Suddenly, she starts talking about how she's so happy they're finally a couple. How she's so happy he got away from me since I was such a crazy ex. Clearly, my boyfriend had been poisoning me against her. That's when I realized I really couldn't blame the girl. My boyfriend had clearly told her that he had broken up with me and that now he was with her. My plan was to initially get out of the bed and surprise them, but instead, I decided to wait. I managed to set up my phone while they were doing it on the bed, and I recorded the entire thing. After they finally finish, she leaves. My boyfriend goes to take a shower, and I finally come out underneath the bed. And I sit on his bed. And the look on this man's face when he comes out of the bathroom, priceless. But the best part is that I was filming the entire thing. At this point, I was still wearing the diapers because I had been under his bed for two days. I'm obviously looking rough. Then I tell him that I've been under his bed for the entire two days. He tried to call me crazy and he tried to kick me out. Then I told him that he needs to break up with the girl and come back with me. If he didn't, I would send the video around to the entire school, including his coach, who is the girl's dad. I got him pretty good. So now he's still my boyfriend, although it's forced to get back at him somehow. I'll keep you guys updated. Bye. Yes, this really did happen. In 2015, a man woke up to a strange post-it note sitting on his desk. On it was a to-do list that he didn't recognize in handwriting that didn't look like his. Since he was up late the night before doing some work, he assumed he must have written out the list when he was half asleep and kind of forgot about it, so he just crumples it up and throws it away. Two weeks later, he wakes up to dozens of these post-it notes all over his wall, and they're all blank except for one that in the same weird handwriting says, our landlord isn't letting me talk to you. Now feeling totally freaked out that some crazy person is crawling around his apartment at night, he starts looking for signs of a break-in, but there aren't any. Instead of calling the police, he shares his experience on Reddit asking for help, and one user's comment literally saves his life. Turns out the man was writing the notes to himself and then forgetting because his brain was slowly dying due to a carbon monoxide leak that was only discovered because a user suggested he install a detector. Am I the asshole for firing my nanny and housekeeper after she slut shamed my daughter? Two years ago, I lost my wife in an accident. It was devastating. She left behind her three daughters, 14, 11, and 5. Once I got back to work, I needed somebody to help keep the house in order and help with the youngest. About a year ago, we hired a woman who I'll call Kate. 
She's an older lady and quite religious, which I don't mind as she was a good worker. I've made it a priority to teach my kids to love themselves and not care about what other people think or be ashamed of their bodies in any way. Well, four months ago, my oldest, who I'll call Bree, started wearing more revealing tops. Nothing too crazy. Am I the asshole for firing my nanny and housekeeper after she slut-shamed my daughter? The tops weren't too crazy, obviously, as she's 14. Kate's made passive-aggressive comments about it a few times, but we just shrugged it off. Three days ago, Brie called me crying, and apparently she was going out with friends, and Kate stopped her. She told her not to leave until she changed because it made her look easy. I confronted Kate, and she didn't even deny it, but claimed she was trying to protect her. I told her she was fired. There were too many instances of disrespect for my parenting, and I wouldn't deal with it. The next day, my parents went off on me, saying I was an asshole because I left an old woman without a job. He never cheated on me, but he did do this weird thing where he would let me know anytime other women hit on him. Like, he'd go out of his way to be like, oh, babe, I just want to let you know, girl at Starbucks tried to give me your number, so. <laughs> and I'm like, cool. <laughs> what do you want me to say to that? You want me to fist bump you? Like, nice, bro. <laughs> Get it. Like... You want me to get jealous, turn into Batman? Like, where is she? Like, what? And he's like, no, I'm trying to be honest with you because I love you. That's what I'm doing. I'm being honest with you. And I'm like, no, you're not. You want me to know that you turned down the option of other people today. You want points for not cheating on me. Like I'm supposed to swoon or something. Like, oh my God, me. You honored the most basic term of our agreement? <laughs> I'm so lucky, this is like a fairy tale. Am I the asshole for agreeing to be a surrogate for my brother-in-law, but not my brother? I have four kids. Every one of my pregnancies and deliveries was very easy, and I love being pregnant. I know I'm very lucky in this regard. My brother-in-law and his husband approached me about carrying their child, and after my husband and I talked about it in depth, we agreed. The entire process was wonderful and pleasant for all parties involved. My brother got married two years ago, also to a man. I don't like his husband very much, for a few reasons, but most of them being that he isn't very responsible, he completely lacks the ability to think or plan ahead, and therefore, over the last few years, they've gotten themselves into a multitude of financial problems because they've done things like going to concerts before paying their electric bill. But even that I can write off as just being young and reckless. I also don't think my brother's husband treats him with much respect. And to be fair, there are definitely times when I don't think my brother is very respectful to his husband either. They are constantly bickering and belittling each other. My brother approached me yesterday and asked if I would be their surrogate. I truly don't think that their home environment is a good one to raise a child in. If they want to be toxic and irresponsible, that's one thing. But a child is a whole other. I told them no and I was honest about my reasoning. Obviously much gentler and with more tact than how I said it here. My brother was extremely upset. After he left, I began to get messages from various family members about how I was being a huge asshole. How it was extremely messed up for me not to agree to be a surrogate for him when I did it for my brother-in-law. Especially because I have such easy pregnancies and deliveries. Sometimes I'm not sure how to do self-care properly. I feel like the way that media portrays self-care is always either wake up at 5 a.m. to go to the gym or wear fancy robes and take a day off to go to an expensive spa. What I learned is that self-care changes as we grow because of our shifting priorities of what a healthy lifestyle looks like. Self-care is often portrayed as indulgence versus doing the things that are actually good for our mind and bodies. So I fell into that trap and thought that I needed to pamper myself in order to feel like I am doing self-care. But self-care is not always easy and it takes a lot more discipline to build good habits, but also habits that make sense for me. I found myself prioritizing my physical well well being over my mental well being over the years, leading to a lot of burnout, meaning that even if my physical needs were all met, I would still feel tired. Now, self care to me is more about allowing myself to say no to events or social obligations when I know I need the time to zone out at home and recuperate. I'm constantly redefining what self care actually means to me and not just trying to match the stock photos of people who generalize what self care looks like. This is why you should never go on a Tinder date past 3 a.m. A man was up late one night scrolling on his phone when suddenly he matched with a girl named Sarah on a dating site. She instantly messaged him and said that she was really bored and he should come to hang out at her place. Sarah sent him the address, so he called an Uber and hopped in the back seat when his driver pulled up. They chatted for some time and eventually pulled up to the house, which the driver said looked strangely familiar. He told the man to be very careful, so he paid him, got out, and began to approach the door. He messaged Sarah and told her that he was waiting outside the front door, when suddenly he saw a figure staring through the window. He then received a call from an unknown number. 
He picked it up, assuming it was Sarah, but it was his Uber driver. He was breathing very heavily and said, Your payment didn't go through. I'm coming back to pick you up. He got back in and the driver told him that a deranged man was luring people into that same house and torturing them to death. So I've been messing with this guy on and off for four years. And in this four years, I've been around a lot of his friends. And a lot of his friends have tried to talk to me. And I'm not saying that me and this man are like super serious because we're not, but like it's like an on and off thing, like I said. So it's like I see him when I see him and it's all love, right? So during quarantine, I stayed with him for like a two week period. Like I was with him for a minute and like his friends had definitely seen me around because obviously I was there for him. Um, and like I said, we weren't like super serious or anything, but like also... I fuck with him. So I've recently been seeing him a lot more in these last like, you know, in this last year and a half, I've been seeing him a lot more. So I have been running into his friends again. So his friend, I guess, was tired of trying to chase me and tired of hearing no. So he offered me a large sum of money or whatever I wanted. And I said, no, I'm not interested. So this man was literally flabbergasted that I said no. And he was like, well, anything you want, just name it, like anything, I'll give you whatever. And I'm like, no, like I, you know, I talked to your friend and I'm not interested in messing around with you. And he's like, am I ugly? Like he just didn't get the picture. He was just like, I don't understand. So he kind of leaves it alone. I see him out and about again. And he then approaches me again. Like, I can't believe it. I don't understand. Like what? what kind of dumb girl are you to not fuck with me if i'm offering you whatever you want and i'm like so because i'm not taking your advances you think i'm a dumb girl like no i just actually you can't buy me that's what it is and i just respectfully told you that i mess with your friend so i then see this man again and he has the literal same dialogue with me but this time there's multiple people around and there's a girl that i'm with and I fuck with her, but like she doesn't need to know my personal business. So he gets irritated and I tell him, don't say this in front of other people. Like this is my business. And he's like, it's my business too. And gets mad again. So I recently run into him this weekend because it was the guy's birthday that I was talking to. It was his birthday this weekend. So he had a couple little things and I was out and about and I saw him sitting down and he got up, he stood up and he wasn't sitting in the chair for a while and my feet had hurt because I was in heels. So I go to sit down and he was like, nah, get the fuck up. So I'm like, why are you talking to me like that? Like, you don't have to talk to me like that. You weren't using the chair. Well, you can ask, you have to ask, part two. Okay, so part two. So he's like, no, like, get the fuck up. Like, you can ask. Like, you don't just sit down. I'm like, um, first of all, you don't own this place that we're in. And second of all, you're not even using it and I'm in heels. He's like, I don't give a fuck about all that. Stand the fuck up. I'm like, okay, bro. Like, you're mad because I don't want to sleep with you. And you're literally trying to pay me to sleep with you and do whatever... Like you literally asked me to name my price or name whatever I want and you're going to get it from me. So now that I said no, you want to be an asshole to me. And I usually wouldn't say anything, but at this point it's getting out of hand because he's being extremely disrespectful for no freaking reason. Um, so it's like, I'm torn. Like, do I tell the guy that I've been messing with? Because obviously, like, I know we're not serious, but like, you know, we've been fucking around for long enough. And the friend literally always makes sure that he does this shit in private. Like, it's never around him. So it's like, obviously, if he thought we were serious, he wouldn't be trying me like that. Or maybe he would. I don't know. Anyways, I'm like, at this point, do I just tell the guy that I'm messing with about what is going on with this man? Because he's starting to get extremely disrespectful, like I said. And I just don't fuck with it. And I'm a very nice person. Like, I don't deserve to be treated like that. And it's like over ass. Like, it's literally over ass. And I just feel like I don't know if I should keep it to myself and just keep dealing with it because I don't want to deal with it. And I know at some point I'm just going to end up spazzing. And I really don't want to do that. So 
I just am torn. Like I'm really stuck on what to do because like I, it's just too much. It's, it's really just too much for no reason. I've just never had a guy speak to me like this. And I've been in the industry for a very long time. Like, and just, I don't understand why a man just can't take the word no and just be okay with the word no. But it's like, I don't want it to backfire on me. And like, I say something and then it causes an issue. And then now every time I'm around him, it just gets worse. Like, so I just, I don't know what to do. What do you guys think? I'm just curious. Like, I know there's going to be a lot of hating ass comments and stuff, but I just don't understand why men act like this. It's not all men, because I know you guys are going to come for me. Side note, I'm really trying to find my new lip combo. And I'm actually like really, really liking this one. I did all MAC and then I just used my Kosas lip oil, which I really love. But back to what I was saying, um, the guy that I've been dealing with for four years wants me to come see him. And he wants me to come see him in the next couple of days. And I know I'm gonna be a rugged friend. So it's like, I don't <laughs> know what the best thing is to do. So tell me what you guys think in the comments. This is the finished look and I love it. Bye. I received a call from my boyfriend to come over to his place to cook for him. He said he would be having a business meeting with some people who wanted to invest in his project. I knew how much this meant to him, so I didn't waste time. I went to his place immediately and spent the rest of the day cooking. Now, a little background story. I've secretly been dating my boyfriend for two years. Let's call him Steven. I know his parents and he knows mine because we all grew up in the same neighborhood. For some reason I don't understand, he wanted to keep our relationship a secret. He told me people in the neighborhood gossiped a lot and he didn't want people to talk about us. I was crazy in love with him so even though i didn't really like the idea i stayed with him the only person who knew about our relationship was my best friend now back to the story after cooking the whole day i was tired and i wanted to sleep over but he refused and said he needed to have a good night's sleep for the meeting the next day so i left it was only after i had gotten home that i realized i had left my phone back at his place i was too tired to go back so i decided to go the next day the next day i contemplated whether to go or not because i didn't want to distract his meeting i tried calling with my mom's number to get him to send someone to bring my phone over but his phone was switched off so i decided to just go to his place first pick my phone and return home when i got to his place his front door was already unlocked so i let myself in only for me to see a big birthday cake on the center table in the living room beside the cake were different drinks both alcohol and soft drinks and the food i had prepared the day before was also packed on another table i immediately thought maybe one of his colleagues was celebrating his birthday but the words on the cake stopped me in my tracks the words on the cake were happy birthday janet you are the love of my life then i I heard some sounds coming from his bedroom and you can imagine what i saw when i got there when he saw me standing in the doorway of his bedroom he told me to go and that he would call me later i burst into tears immediately and do you know what he did he just put on his shorts held my hand and pulled me away from the bedroom he told me things were not really working between us and that he wanted to break up i just stared at him in amazement i didn't know what to do and i just kept on crying my phone was still inside his house so i told him i wanted my phone but he told me to go and that he'll give the phone to someone to bring it over but i insisted which made him hungry i knew where i left the phone so without saying a word to him i went to the kitchen to pick it up all this while with tears streaming down my face he was still in the living room when i got there he looked at me in disgust and told me he never wanted to see me again so long story short i started dating his older brother instead we got engaged last year and got married early this year he's crazy about me oh and did i mention steven depends on his older brother financially even the apartment and the car he drives belongs to his older brother no man has ever loved me like the way his brother loves me and he doesn't hide anything from me and he always wants my input in any decision he takes so anytime steven asks for money basically i have to say yes before he gets the money his brother knows about my past with steven but i told him it was nothing serious steven now always looks at me with fear in his eyes he knows how much his brother loves and adores me and he also knows saying the wrong thing to me will cost him financially be careful of what you do to a good woman because you will have to deal with the bitch you created oh and am i the asshole for marrying his older brother this follower needs your advice babes please drop some below Cause I've been busy